All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is December 19th, 2023. We have a study session today in regards to the special meeting that we're going to be having in maybe about 45 minutes, a regular city council meeting. This particular one is most specifically in regards to a study session on three new positions that are being uh, proposed by administration. And we're going to give our council members, the audience, residents, etc., an opportunity to be able to get um, A, a clarification in regards to these positions, and B, to be able to ask any questions that they may have, whether it's council members or th those in the audience. For those in the audience and on Zoom, I will, of course, give you an opportunity to be able to speak. It'll just be after the council members, if you don't mind. So at this particular point, I'm going to ask the mayor and our current um, uh, city engineer to give us just a little abbreviation as far as these positions, and then we'll start with questions from uh, council members. Ahead, Mr. Mayor. Council Chair. Okay, so for the last close to two years, you know, we've been putting a lot of Mike grants on? in. Mike yeah, it's, it's on. Okay. So we, we have we have obviously the funding scout that you guys approved, and uh, with the help of uh, Mr. Deem and Mariana, uh, working on some of the grants. You know, we have close to thirty million dollars in grants right now allocated to us, and also. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I mean, you were in a meeting with co the Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib the other day, and she, uh, she mentioned that uh, we have more money coming in. That, that's in addition. And we also have money that's supposed to be coming in from uh, Congressman uh, also uh, Sri Tanadar from the other side, of, you know, from a portion uh, of Dearborn Heights. So with all the money coming in, uh, there's going to be a lot of work. You know, there's going to be... You know, we need we need more more people to help to help us out. You know, I mean, you know more than anybody. You've been on council, you and Councilman uh, Constant the most. So you've seen, you know, that we are we are short staff. So in order to we have the money that we're getting, uh, a lot of it is obviously restricted, and we have to spend it in a very short time, in probably two years, or maybe you know some of it less than two years, two two and a half years, some of it. And the money that needs to be spent is also, obviously, it's federal, a lot of it is federal money that every, every dollar has to be accounted for. So we really have to monitor it very well. So obviously we have also, you know, listening to the council for the last two years, you know, I know we, we, we had some uh, uh, miscommunication, lack of communication, bad communication, whatever, you know, we want to call it, but it was lack of communication, obviously. Um, that, you know, I can tell you we're moving very fast, you know, with the short staff that we have, and we just need to have somebody to, um, to be able to communicate, you know, some of the stuff that we're working on. We need somebody to actually uh, be responsible for some of the things that we're working on. So just to give you an example, um, so we'll start with city engineers. So there's been a lot of, you know, going back and forth, you know, with, uh, contracted services uh, with, with that position with a city engineer. So obviously that position, we decided to bring it in-house. And in the charter, it mentions a city engineer. So, so we are going to bring in a city engineer in-house. So the city engineer will be a city engineer, so be responsible for any engineering services in the city of Dearborn Heights. Um, anything from, you know, residential, commercial, you know, city property, anything. And as you know, you know, we have money allocated for the fire station. So that we're not going to make the same mistake that was done in the past. You know, spend millions of dollars in something that is going to last less than 20 years. So we definitely, you know, with the, with the amount of money that the city of Dearborn Heights gets with the lack of funding, you know, we want to try to maximize every dollar that we're getting into, into the city. So we do have to hold people accountable. We do have to have you know, better staff uh, to help us and guide us for the next three years. And again, this is not just the 30 millions or, and also the uh, about $14 million, million dollar that we have also with ARPA. So we're talking close to $45 million that we have to spend in two and a half years. That's a lot of money. We, the, the city of Dearborn Heights has never had that much money to spend in the short, especially in the short amount of time. In the 60 years of history of Dearborn Heights, we've never had that. So with that, the city engineer is going to be very crucial for, for us to make sure that everything that we're building in the city of Dearborn Heights, 
that we, we, we brought that in-house. So we're going to do the engineering. You know, with my background as an engineer, the last thing you want to do is subcontract engineering work to somebody that doesn't have um, the interest. You know, you're just paying somebody basically that doesn't have the, the passion for the city. You know, it's not really working for the city like we've had in the past. So that's the city engineer's position, basically. With the uh, director of asset management, you know, that position I, is also I, I don't mean be... to interrupt. I just got one question. Would the city engineer position be different than what Ali Deeb already does? No, he's going to be the same. It's going to be the same position. So it's just it's Ali Deeb. Well, we're just shifting it. Yeah, it's going to be a full-time person instead of contract. Well, we were always a full-time person. Were we no, not? we're no. Uh, sorry, Councilman. It's part. It's actually getting paid by the hour, so it's part-time. So we're going to bring uh, Ali Deeb in full-time. So Ali Deeb used to be part-time. Yes. <laughs> Which we worked well, a lot of hours for part-time. Well, he's talking about the most recent contract. Yes. Yeah. Questions or no, no, no. Yeah. I, just so, had, I just had a question. So, okay, with that, so Mr. Deeb is actually, I mean, since you, we mentioned his name, um, we have, <coughs> in the past, we, we have two meetings a month. That we have the planning and the zoning meetings, right? So I can't remember, if, for, refresh my memory, Mr. Deeb, we're paying like, what, $1,000 per, 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 per meeting? Mm -hmm. So we're paying $1,000 per meeting for somebody from an engineer to be there, a contract engineer. Mr. Deeb has been there. He's volunteering to be there. Since, since he's been here, he's been volunteering his own time. He's also there during those meetings. I've yes. Seen him. Yeah, so he, he's been in that meeting. So we don't need contracted services for that anymore. We haven't had that service. So he saved us, you know, just, just take that two years or so. He's been here for every meeting, probably 100, 100, over $100,000 just in that, just those two meetings. So we do need a full-time person. Uh, also, because that's, this 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 job is going to be full time. It's not. Mayor, sorry to interrupt. How many meetings of planning and zoning commissions we have a year? It's supposed to be once a month for each one. So that's so that's, that's twenty-four. That's two meetings, two meetings a month for one planning, one zoning. That's, and Mr. Deeb has been going to both of them. That's totally twenty-four. So we saved around for thousand. two years. For two years, we saved around thousand dollars. And plus whatever amount of time that they, they work on trying to get packages together. Okay. So they don't just be, they're not just there for the meeting. Also, for every meeting they reject, they're spending thousands of dollars and going back and saying, okay, we have to revise this sentence or this paragraph. So they go back and they're charging us more for pre prepping <coughs> documents. So it's not just the meeting that we're paying for. We're also paying for their services, other services that they're doing just to prepare for these meetings. That's a okay. thousand just to be Thank at the you. meeting. Yeah, okay, so let's, uh, I'm, I'm allowed the mayor maybe do another three, four minutes, whatever, on the last uh, okay. position. So, and then we'll get a, a abbreviation from uh, Mr. Deep. Bless you. Bless you. So the, the second position we want to add is the director of asset management. And, you know, I, I did send you all, all this Correct. information. So I'm just going to skim through the stuff. And I did also send you an org chart. Right. So... That position, once, just just to give you one example, the fire station. Once we build the fire station, Mr. Deeb is going to be in charge of the engineering part of it, right? So we need somebody to make sure that it's maintained, you know, that make sure that everything is being built over there. So Mr. Deeb is not going to be there 24-7 to make sure if, if there's, like, say, a, a, you know, 100 PSI compressor that has to be there, that person will make sure that the, the the compressor that we're paying for is going to be there. So the brand, whatever they quote us for, the asset management is responsible for that. The asset management the manager, management director will also be responsible for something that we, we've discovered. There's no preventative maintenance program in the city at all. You know, it's when something breaks, we, we sometimes we have to borrow money from somewhere, from another fund. We have to reallocate money to fix certain things. The city, we had a... a uh, a power out, you know, you guys all remember that. Our police station, the dispatch was shut down. We had to shift our dispatch for a couple days to Dearborn because somebody did not do preventative maintenance on a generator, the backup generator at the police station. So if we had somebody like direct, I mean, that could have been a nightmare for us, but thank God, you know, we had, luckily we had the leadership and the police that we did. We were able to 
get the resources and be able to work with Dear One, partner with them on just dispatch to make sure our city stays safe. Also, we have a lot of property, a lot of lots, a lot of homes uh, that we, we have currently that is not, we're paying, we're paying on all the maintenance, we're paying on all of that stuff. So we need to get rid of that property. And for, just to give you an example, we, I think we have about 30 something homes roughly right now. Plus we have, I think, few commercial property and we have probably like 100 lots that we need to get rid of. So imagine if we get rid of all of that stuff in one year, we estimate it's going to be between 500000 to a $1 million just for, just for that portion. And that person will, um, will also be looking at grants. You know, there's never been a capital improvement program for any building. If anything breaks down and any property that city owns, you know, we have to figure out, figure out a way where we're going to get the money. So that person will be in charge of also the capital improvement plan you know, for every building the city owns. So the last one, real quick, on uh, the director of community relations. Every city has uh, somebody that does, you know, community relations between, it's not just a person that is between the mayor and the council, it has to be also with, uh, with the residents. Uh, the council, I said, you guys take a lot of calls you know, you, you got to be able to call, you know, if you call a particular director, you don't get a hold of the director, you got to wait, or there, there's concerns you want to get something taken care of, you, you go to, straight to that person, and there's also going to be a lot of public hearings. So those public hearings, you know, that person be responsible for that, because a lot of the money that we're getting, you got to do public hearings. So that person will be responsible to put that stuff out, just to make sure there's great communication between the administration, the council, you know, the, the clerk's office, the treasurer's office, the residents. So that, 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 that position is also very key into everything that we're getting, you know, like I said, by close to $45 million, and it doesn't stop at the $45 million. Even as we speak, we're still looking for other funding. We're still working with every, both Congress members and also our two state senators you, I'm sorry, two U.S. senators and also our state rep, you know, try to get other fundings for other things, you know, for parks, you know, for uh, city buildings, for recreation, you know, for, you know, for, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of work that we're doing right now, and we just don't have the time to slow down. We need a person to make sure everything, every communication is being flowed to the council and also to the residents. Okay, so I, I, I could tell for those residents in the audience and maybe on Zoom, um, the amount of money coming in the City Hall, we're blessed. Um, in my eight years on council, this is the biggest amount of money that we've had coming in. And this is almost like our full budget. So that's a lot of money. And then this is one of the reasons that administration is proposing that they have people in place to be able to do this. What I'm going to do at this particular point, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Deeb, Ali Deeb, if you could give us maybe like about a three, four minute abbreviation, okay. and then I'm going to take it to questions from council members, and then from there we'll go to questions from the audience, please. So go ahead, Mr. Deep. Okay. So as the mayor indicated, um, thank you, Council Chair, um, <clears throat> we, um, the administration, um, in the last two or three years, uh, I've been with the city for two and a half years, almost three years now, um, um, we have um, looked at the existing organization and where we want it to be. And we've taken an extreme detailed look at some of the stuff that we did not address or we weren't equipped to address. And, and the biggest issue was, uh, the, the largest issue in my opinion was the lack of um, um, planning, the lack of capital improvement. And then one of the largest uh, um, 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 issues that we were facing is the lack of facility management. So most of these things were, um, it's, not a, it's not a reflection on any of the people that we have. We just did not have the right people. We, we, um, we don't have facility management of any kind. We have building maintenance. Um, that's about all we have, which is a, um, 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 you know, you're not a preventative maintenance. You're not doing, so issues like the uh, neglected bridges, the buildings that we have, the fire departments, um, Roof maintenance doesn't exist, you know, things of that nature. And that is what the, the um, um, facility manager was supposed to be looking for. Preventative, predictive, and scheduled maintenance. 
so you, your asset can last can last and you can actually do that this I'm not going to cover the city engineer because I think we the mayor did a great job the city engineer is the person who is responsible for the technical portion of the city in the past the city relied on a contract employee from a, a, a private company but that person was uh, covering multiple cities so so things like uh, I'm actually going through the reports of the bridges now with uh, you know biannual inspection of all the bridges well I've gone back to 2012, and there were issues that the city brought up, uh, the state brought up in every inspection, you know, that, you know, that, that needed urgent uh, um, attention. Um, one, we did not find the reports in the city. No one ever read them in the city, and no one did anything with them. In fact, there is no budget for to do any work on them. So there is no preventative or scheduled maintenance. As the mayor indicated, what we did is we waited for things to fail, and then we'll just go ahead and, 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 um, and fix them. That's not going to happen going forward. So what do you have before you, the organization charts that you have before you, look at t is the result of that, that internal investigation, if you will. What are the shortcomings? Now, this is important because, as the mayor indicated, we are getting a lot of money. And so we, we intend to build it the right way going forward. But in order to do that, it's a team effort. I need to be able to turn it over to someone and say, now the new fire station is going to be under a strict preventative uh, maintenance schedule. So if I have a 15-year roof, I don't want you to come back in 25 years and say, I have a new roof. Uh, case in point, the, the, the police building. That's not a new roof. That's a roof beyond its useful life. It was never maintained. And, and, and it's not a reflection on, on anyone. We don't have, we did not have the process or the system in place to look at these things and manage them. Um, you know, th this is just one example. Bridges, roadways are the same way. Why are the roads in the same, um, in the conditions they are in? You know, they are pre preventative maintenance. You know, they, it was never happened. So this is the kind of stuff that we're looking at currently. So going forward, we do it as we build new with all the money that we're having. And by the way, it is two year. Um, the money goes back to the government if it's not spent in two years. So there will be a lot of money to be spent. And the number I'm, I'm, play, I'm looking at now is probably over 50 million. So there's still some in the, in the work and we look, we're looking good to get more money. So what we're, <coughs> what we're trying to do here is to have the, the um, uh, staffing that we need internally to handle that work properly and, and, be, and be successful. The last person I need, you know, the last position, the ombudsman, uh, public relation is critical. I mean, we're facing most of our work is going to be in areas where we have to interact with the public. Um, I was just telling um, Councilwoman uh, today that we have this little um, issue with smoke testing of, on the south end um, on Beach Daily. And that's something that is part of the CSO and there's, you know, I, I, I just don't have the person to do it. To be the li liaison between the administration and, and the public and follow up. And when people start calling tomorrow, I'll probably end up getting the calls. So it, this is the kind of stuff that we're trying to do. It is a good organization chart. If you look at it, there are right people, uh, right position, not people, right positions for the work that we're trying to do. It's as okay. simple as and, that. And I'm Thank sorry, I forgot to mention the water meters. You know, that, you know, we're blessed to have the money for the water meters right now that it's not going to be on Did taxpayers. that money guaranteed? Did it come in yet? Uh, no. Official? We're... we're, we're I know because last time you said you were waiting on to hear if it, it is official. So it's 100% official? It is official It is on their schedule. So I know you want the money in the bank. No, it no, no. I just want to know yes, yes. Do we have anything in writing that it's official? The, in writing, no. It's, they actually you need, us, you need the council authorization. We gave it last yes. week. So and it's, it's basically uh, saying, based on, because you had mentioned based on the fact that once you get the authorization from the council. We send it to them. Yeah, and, but and it's still, from what I understood from you, it's still a formality. It still has to be eventually approved. It's not yes. automatic. Yes. Yeah, so then yeah. we don't have it yet. No. So that's okay. that's a huge project, you know, that the city is, hasn't undertaken that, that kind of project, you know, probably like 60 years. I don't know how old these meters. But 63. 60-some years. I mean, that's a lot older than, you know. Okay. And so, yeah. so what I'm going to do now, uh, Ali and Mayor, I'm going to yes, allow sir. for council members to go ahead and start with questions. Then eventually I'll go to people in the audience. So just to make this simpler, we'll start with... Our councilwoman, in case she has a question, then we'll... All right. Is this forward. on the org chart only that we're talking well, about? Well, anything to do with these three positions. Okay. Well, when I look at it, I see four gray areas and something under building and engineering called building. 
I see four or five positions. I'm well, not sure. About. You know what? I, I, I want to interrupt you for a second because there's something that uh, me and, uh, and uh, Mr. Deep spoke about. And the org chart, and I'll show it to the audience. But I want council members to look here. So the way it looks here, it looks like these positions here are under these positions. They're not. It's just on a on this sheet of paper. On a sheet of paper, they couldn't put them all. Correct. To the left and right. So just to clarify, these are not positions below this one. And for those in the audience, you probably can't see it, but in the org chart that we were given, it's just the way it laid out on the paper. It looks like these <coughs> positions are below this, and it's not. I don't know if. Um, okay, no, Council I mean, Chair, can you put it up on the. Council the Chair, I, I can explain. Okay, so. I mean, we can go here. Well, so we, ha right. we have the Director of Asset Management here, mm -hmm. Director of Community Relations here. Brandon. So then the city engineer, the city engineer, obviously, you can't go all the way across right, the woman. Right. I understand. So I think you're talking about this one here. Yes. That's so amazing. this one here, all, we, all what we're trying to do here, we're trying to show the interaction between the city engineer and also it's going to be part of planning and engineering. So that planning and engineering will be uh, interacting with the city engineer and also with uh, building, like say, like the Rick Wildlands. You know, now, is that a new position then or no? No, 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 no. That just shows you that. It's a segment of. Yeah, it's a segment. Yeah. The okay. plan, it's a and the same with the, the building under building and engineering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, that was one I. So the only three concerned. positions that you saw, Councilwoman, is what you see here. Um, the Director of Asset Management, Director of Community Relations, and the City Engineer. And then Department of Innovation and Technology. Is that. Is Cooper the director of that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah nothing changed. And then changed. cable is a segment down from that. All right. so, yeah, so we can actually, I mean, if we can get a, a larger chart, we can do that for you at the, if you guys approve it. We can give you a chart on a larger sheet that shows, you know, everything across. All right. Across. Do we have people in mind for these positions at this point? Uh, we, well, obviously the city engineer standing well, yeah, right I in front of you. Him. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, the other ones, you know, we're, we, we have, you know, we're, we're, we're talking to, uh, we have probably talked to a few people to see who is best fit for these positions. Okay. And they would follow through with these agendas and we would, yeah, descriptions? The, yeah, this, yeah this, these will be their job responsibilities okay. in here. Will we be able to see resumes from the people who yes. wish to apply? Yes, we can send them to you. All right. That's all I have. Anybody else on this side that has any questions? Thank you, Council Chair. But Briefly, so the uh, Director of Community Relations, now what happens is somebody has a complaint, they contact maybe a council person or the mayor's office, and then Ariana or somebody, sure. this will be a person who can help with that process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can streamline it to that person, and that person can help the council because, I mean, just seven of you. So if you need anything, you can go straight to that one person, and that person can get a hold of the administration, you know, let us know. Or if we need something to float to the council members, they can do the same. And if there's something the council or uh, the other two elected officials when it flows something to you guys or the, the residents, that person will be responsible for that as well. Great, great. Um, and then I noticed with the uh, job descriptions, there was the deputy comptroller and the comptroller. Um, so the deputy comptroller is, uh, is it's not on here as a study session. No. We're trying to prove, because of the question that was asked at the last meeting, uh, trying to get rid of uh, a third party that is helping us with work try to up the salary so we can get a dep make it more marketable for the deputy <laughs> controller because at the current salary, we cannot hire. We, we offered that, that salary, and nobody wants it. And it's also a position that had previously been there, so this is not yeah. a new position. It's a right. position that had previously yes. been yes. there. Yeah, right. They've tried to rehire somebody else, and we haven't had the success as an administration because of the amount of pay. So all the proposal is right now for the administration is to raise it. I believe it's thirty-three thousand dollars over and above what was uh, previously advertised. Council Chair, uh, I'm just going to go in order, I, if you don't mind, Council. I just want to add on to the, the comptroller position since we're on there, but I know this is something we've asked HR, the administration, and I'm going to say I'm going to reiterate it again. Uh, when we're requesting for these job job opportunities, and I, I have had this conversation with Roger, um, we need to go outside of just our our, our, our uh, you know community page. I mean, it needs to be on Facebook. We, I mean, it's great that we're putting things that saying, hey, we're looking like we're hiring, uh, but we can actually be a little bit more descriptive when we're going out on social media. Uh, let's just call it for what it is. We're in the 21st century, hopefully soon the 22nd century, and social media is just, you know, helps the world spin, and you're just getting a lot more of your information on there. It's great to say we're hiring cadets, 
but I've not seen anything else other than that our police department is hiring or we're hiring. Uh, so maybe for a little bit more descriptive on the things that we're hiring on, maybe we'll have more uh, uh, opportunities maybe for, touch for, a, for touch people a, and we'll grab more other attention. Maybe we can attach a link to the post. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So I, I think we need to do a little better on that, but that's just my uh, two cents on that. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Abdul Hadd. Thank you. Um, Mayor, those positions are head of departments. You guys speaking to the council. Um, okay, so if those you, are heads of departments. So if you look at uh, the job descriptions, um, as of right now, there is the positions that we have. They don't have nobody reporting to them, so they're going to be their own uh, their their own entity. Since they report to you, they will be head of department. I assume yes. because nobody else report to you unless they are head of departments. Yes. Uh, the charter call on head of department to be established either by charter amendment or by ordinance. Correct, Councillor? Um, I believe that you answered Your mic is off. Sorry, I believe you answered that last time. You're asking if these positions need to be created by an amendment? Absolutely, yes. I don't think so. Yes, it is. Charter is clear. We done that with the library when we separated from uh, the recreation, and we done that with another. I looked at that vote in 2007. 2014 and 2010. Actually, it was 2007, to, and it was to one to of the three, out to separate the three amendments them. to separate the, the, the library and the parks and recreation. That was the vote, okay. and there was confusion as to that vote. So I'm still looking into that. Okay, I suggest you read 512, section 512 from the charter. And I recommend to the city council not to do this because we will be in violation of the charter. Either we come up with an uh, ordinance or with a charter amendment before we take any step, which we will uh, I, I, ju I just uh, like to, okay, go ahead. Water meter, Mr. Ali, when do you expect the millions of dollars to come in how long time was the time is not um, um, the, the timing for the water meter uh, uh, funding the eight and a half million is uh, the state so we are going down the list now they asked us to do a project evaluation and we just submitted it Monday yesterday okay. and so it, it, we're following they will release the funding to us, so I'm following the State uh, uh, Drinking Water Act um, um, funding. So it's really, um, so we're, we're following their uh, proposal. It is 26, technically. So 2026. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have at least we're, two, we're, we're, two years but, before but we see the, that. I'm but just the, following the, that there are millions make me very happy that millions come into the city. But, but I want to know let me when they're the, going to come to the city. Just want to let me finish. Yes. So I'm trying to get started before that because the eight and a half, the project itself, just to keep in mind, is 12, is, is, is estimated at 12 million and some change. So um, we do have the remainder of the money in the old bond. So remember, I, uh, the, I went through the, the explanation a couple of meetings ago and how much money we have. We Close have to seven. Some, we do have Close some of that seven money. million dollars. You're we right. do have some of that money left. So I'm trying to convince the state to use our portion because it's not going to happen overnight, right? So we're not going to do the entire uh, 25,000 meters in one sh uh, shot. So I'm trying to convince working with the state. So can we at least not use your money? Because if I start using their money without their approval, then I lose it. So I'm trying to work with them to see if we can start phase one, do one area using our portion without risking the loss of the state, and they haven't replied to that yet, but we're working with them. Uh, normally, do we, do we have to spend the money up front, then we apply for the money to be reimbursed? Re so, so it's a reimbursable grant, yes, so that's how it works. I would assume we're talking about probably 2028 before we receive that money, if we, if we start working and spending our own money. So but this project at least need a couple years, I would assume. Yes. So, but let, let me. So instead of spending the money and working and sending them the invoice and reimbursement, I'm working with them so we can get the invoice directly to them. So it gets spent. You know, we do progress payment, right? So currently, the way and it's not fully designed yet. We currently have that pl the project envisioned at the city being divided into seven uh, areas. 
and there is a reason for that. So the seven areas, uh, we can start on those areas, and then, and then um, in my last coordination with the designer, the seven areas are going to, we're including more work in the area than just a water meter. So um, we have um, um, lead line, which is another grant, right? So the lead line replacement, it makes sense while you're in the building or in the house, replacing the meter to look at the lead line, and if it is lead, you can replace it. So there are a lot of elements that are getting into it, but yes, Okay, I'm going to interrupt both of you guys for just a second. We're way, we're getting off track know, now. We're, now we're getting I'm on the water I'm meters. Ask so let's, you know, I understand you're answering a question, but if 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 that's a question you're going to ask, let's ask it as it pertains to the three positions because I want to stick with the study session material. Mm -hmm. that, the information Con was given that they're going to they're going to look at. No, this. I understand. I'm yeah. just I mean, saying, just make sure this is a part of the I job. Of I'm the just saying, let's make sure it's pertaining there. That's not, all. It is. Okay, that's his but, duty to do the. This, that's part Correct. of his duties, which is written. I know, but I don't want to go into in a study front, session on the water meter. In the front that's of, all. I'm not. I'm just asking questions, you know, financially. Are we, I mean, we're hearing like $50 million coming to the city, and I want to see when we're going to receive this money. And, uh, you know, that, okay. that is very important for me and the residents to know, are we really receiving this money, or are we going to wait until, you know, 2028, 2026? Okay. Uh, now, the the second the second one, director of asset management. Mm -hmm. We do have DPW. We have a director, and we have, I believe, two superintendents. They are responsible for the maintenance of the building. They are responsible for all these facilities in the city, and they're supposed to maintain them, they're supposed to monitor, they're supposed to know exactly the condition of every building, of everything, every car, every item we have in the city. Are we going to eliminate their jobs, or they are not doing their jobs, so we bring in somebody to overlook those people? You have preventative. You have a maintenance department, building maintenance. You do not have facility manager. You don't. Facility manager is not a maintenance person. Facility manager <coughs> actually um, uh, manages facilities. You look at preventative maintenance program. Evaluate the facilities. Find out what conditions they're in. Not not uh, 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 building maintenance. He's not out there doing maintenance. The maintenance staff is not being eliminated. Maintenance, building maintenance will continue to do what they do today. It's building maintenance, but the the management of the facility is much more than the building maintenance. You know, um, um, looking at asset, and it's not the building; it's the entire asset. So, so I said earlier, um, the reason I premature failure on my streets was it was n narrowed down to one reason: it's not being maintained by, meaning that uh, the joints were never replaced ever. So there is no program, there is no preventative program um, in the city for anything that we build, whether it's buildings, roads, roofs, mechanical system, anything. We do not have an asset manager in the city, and this is what this position is. It's not a maintenance person at all. Okay. Mr. Deep, the reason I'm asking this, if the two positions are overlapping and they do the same job, the charter prevent us from creating another uh, another position for something which already in existence. What position? I, I would be like very it. careful if that is the case. It is not now, the case. Now, the ombudsman. There are two issues for the ombudsman. Are we hiring somebody to investigate wrongdoing in the city, or somebody who's going to do something else? It, it, I tell you, it's definitely not to investigate. That's not an investigator, that's a uh, liaison. Ombudsman means, if you look at the federal standards, the federal definition for it, it is somebody, basically, if somebody complain about something which is wrong in the city, that's the job of the ombudsman to come and do it. Is this part of it? There are two things. I really want to thank Rachel Lapointe. She sent email. I wish you guys read it. It's a few pages. But she done a beautiful job. She put lots of time into it. And I think she's a spot on on every uh, point. And I hope that the city council read it, please, before you make any decision tonight. Thank council you. Chair, 
I, I, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, Maybe. I just want to point out something earlier um, in our conversation. Um, Councilman Abdul Haq mentioned in regards to this could be against the charter, and it could be or it could not be. But I just want to clarify something. We could still, as a body, approve sub something subject to being within the legal confines of the charter. In other words, if it's not like the councilman is saying, then obviously it would make it void. So we are still able to, to make that decision. In addition, obviously, our corporation council can, can give us an opinion on that. Council Chair, I really hardly and strongly disagree with you, and I hate to say this, because we do not want to basically violate the charter. Then we come back and say, oops. No, 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 no. <laughs> what that would mean is we're voting on the positions. If we let you let's use a hypothetical, we approve the positions. If we approve the positions, we can still approve them subject to being within the confines of the charter, at which point we will get an official opinion, whether it's tonight, but I don't want to put the Corporation Council on the spot, or maybe tomorrow or whatever it is, make sure that this is within the confines of the charter. That's all I'm saying. Because okay. anything that's against the charter, we can't I agree. approve it, I obviously. Agree. And I got the charter section up. It says the City Council has the power to an authority to establish. So let's say, for example, uh, in a Department of... IT years ago we didn't need that so but you know that position we, we, we can create it but councilman Zuhair and I want to clarify the mayor is bringing a particular position forward just because the mayor brings it forward doesn't make it official it only becomes official when the council approves it and therefore when the council approves it that's when it becomes uh, authorized and established officially okay right. I, I okay councilman, I, councilman that's not a good point I would like and you I, know, I would add it wasn't Roger, I would like you really to review 512 section 512 section 511b and uh, section 57a before we move with anything and we have those are very really important okay. issue no, we commit in the city to close to $450,000 in salaries and benefit because those are salary the plus benefit the plus pension so this is a huge amount of money. We may not have it in the budget, and I need an actuary report to see if the budget can really withstand this kind of money. Okay? We are spending money, and we are appointing. We're doing all these things. Do we have the money? We haven't been able even to pay the money for the ARPA for the employees, for yeah. heaven's sakes. Okay. The, the uh, council chair, the, the language used was a director, not a department or commission. So, and when I think of a department, I think of staff, I think of other people with it. I'm just saying that what was presented to me on the 512, it was not a department or a commission. It was only one individual for each of these positions and a director, the mayor can appoint directors. So, uh, looking at it, I don't mind, you know, if you want me to do more study on it, but I didn't see secretarial staff, I didn't see um, assistants, I didn't see anything else to formally establish a department or a commission on the 5.12. Roger. That, that's what I'm saying. It was presented as individual city engineer, people to do. City engineer will be working and supervising. That's what you guys say in your uh, job prescription. But he's doing he, what he's been doing. They will be managing people. They will be directing people. Probably they don't have directly staff in their office, but they will be in supervision you know, position where they can tell people what to do, what, you know, what sure. to perform. Sure. So please, before we go any further, I'm not trying to make it hard. I want the you're city not. to move forward. You're, you're not making it difficult. Be, but, but I want them to be done the proper way. I, I would just add to that that it's the same function duties he's been performing already. So there was nothing else added in terms of staff or anything else to create a department. But he's been functioning in that role over the last year, since he started, when he was as, as a part-time. As he said, he's been doing all this. So it's not a department being created and in any of these positions. And it's just doing functions that have been over here and over here. It's consolidating them for the ombudsman position to take, <clears throat> take ease and direct and, and consolidate the, the work and, and, and get a... Re, get a um, Get, give accountability to the, to the people who call in. And that's what the ombudsman position and the other financial direction is not a separate department, but it is a function that's continued. It's already been existing. It's consolidating it. 
I'm again not against. But that's how I read it. I'm so. not against those positions or who he, the mayor has the power to appoint. I just want it to be done according to the charter so we are not in violation of something we regret later on. That's all. Okay. And I move Thank on. You. Mr. Mayor, you had, a, you had a comment, and then I'll make a comment, and then Councilman Bidu. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying is five section five eleven no, no, section five eleven B. It's a it has city engineer on here. So yes, it does. It's, okay, that's all. It does. Okay, so um, <coughs> a couple of questions that I have either for the mayor, hospital controller, or uh, Mr. Deep. Paying for these positions, obviously these positions come at a cost, whether it's pensions or whether it's salaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do we have the funding available to be able to pay for it? I know we have money in the general fund, but obviously you always want to leave a little leeway there. Do we have enough? The first question is, do we have enough money to be able to pay for it? Yes, yeah, we do. That's why we put these positions in. Again, you know, this is going to be necessary positions to be able to go through to everything that we have for the next, you know, several years. Okay. So, so we are going to take it out of the general fund. So the next question I would ask is just like when you're running a business, you ask yourself when you either create a position or when you do some sort of advertising or when you do an expansion of a business, the question that's always asked when you're running a business, is it going to pay for itself? So is what we're bringing forward with these three positions, is it going to pay for itself in terms of either savings or possibly bringing in additional money like we did, for example, with the grant writer of the grant uh, company? Bringing in, is it going to be better services only, or is it going to pay for itself, or is it going to be savings? Which one of those three is it primarily? It's going to be all three, Council Chair. It's going to, especially with the money that we have to spend, we cannot, we cannot afford to lose one grant. If we, if we have to pay one grant back to the government, that's going to be very detrimental to the city. So we can't afford to even lose one grant. Even the, you know, the grant that we're talking about, the water meters, you know, something like that, you know, it's a few million, few million dollars that we actually were not taking a loan or doing bond like they did several years ago in mm -hmm. 18 or so. So mm -hmm. we're not taking any money out. We're trying to use money. For, well, it's not free money. It's taxpayers' money, but not the city of Dearborn Heights taxpayers, obviously. Okay. But we, we do have to spend that money, and we do have to very – be very very careful, and we do we do need the the people to actually help us out, because we're still we haven't stopped yet. We're still seeking other funding. We're not saying you know what we're done getting money. You know we're still working with the funding scout. You know Mr. Deeb Mariana, uh, they're still working on trying to get other grants. This is not going to stop. You know like I mentioned for the last several meetings, you know City of Dearborn Heights was lacking so much, you know, this is 60 years, there hasn't been anything done. The water, the sewer system, <coughs> everything is obsolete, you know. A lot of other cities that are actually a lot older than us are in better shape. I go to meetings with the DCC communities and CWW, they've never heard some of the stuff that happens to us, you know, Dearborn Heights. So we're still seeking other money, and I can tell you, <coughs> we got the attention from federal and also state folks about the stuff, the money that we need for the city, and even the lead. You know, we still haven't gotten rid of all the lead lines, and there's, right. there's, there's a lot of, uh, lot of talk right now. Even you heard it the other day from the congresswoman. They got this lead out caucus, and, you know, there's got to be a lot of millions coming in, you know, to cities that are willing to go 100% no lead lines in the city. So just that project is going to be so huge. We cannot afford to, to miss anything. We, we, can't, we can't skip anything. We, mm -hmm. we put this out. You know, we're here, to, you know, we're here full time. We know what the city needs. And this, these, these positions, some of the stuff we're asking for, and out of respect for the council, you know, we put it here so you guys can be part of the process to approve it. You know, right. because, you know, we need to work as a team, again, to move us forward. You know, we have a lot of projects in place right now. We need people to help us with it. Okay. And we still have to work on other, other things that we still have to do on a daily basis, Council Chair. 
Okay. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to add to, to, to this answer, uh, Council Chair, the, the, the value of these positions, um, uh, in addition to what the mayor indicated, the preventative maintenance is, is critical because it extends the life of what you're paying for today. So we're replacing pavement. We just did five streets, right? I got two and three in the spring. These, 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 these fully replaced full streets, right? These things, if you don't maintain them, the concrete should last about 25 plus. If you do not maintain it and replace the joint in seven years, you, you, you'll be replacing it just like you did on Sheehan in nine years. So this is in, at, at, at $2.6 million a mile, it, it can add up quite a bit. Your budget, your current budgets, when we put these together, I looked at details. Your, your, your mayor, the mayor indicated, uh, gave you an example of the deadline. We have in our budget for the last many years, as long as I can review, uh, two million dollars per year for, for a lead line, right? So for to remove red line every year in your budget. Well, we just got three, 13 and a half million dollars to, to do all of them. You just freed up two million dollars per year. So this is, uh, this is a saving, it's a direct saving to us. I just freed up two million dollars per year from my current operating budget because we were able to get the 13 and a half million dollars to do all of it. So yes, it, it it is it is it is going to pay for itself. It's going to uh, yes. Okay. Well, well even we Council Chair, I'm sorry to so keep interrupting. We were just a few weeks ago. We had a meeting with Plan Moran and the attorneys, yeah. and they were proposing that we do put another bond, bond. for the wa for the water meters. Yeah. And we just kept waiting, kept waiting because we knew there was something coming from the from the feds and the state. So thank God we waited long enough to, for them to come back and to say, you know what, we're going to help Dearborn Heights. And it could have been $13 million the taxpayers were, Dearborn Heights taxpayers would have to pay for. To pay, right. In um, addition to the 20-something million that we took out that the water fund is paying for. Okay. That's what we'll be doing. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ali Deeb. Yes, uh, thank you guys for being here today. <sighs> Council Chair, uh, looks like we're witnessing another last meeting of yours. <laughs> um, this is what I, I have a couple of things here, we'll and one of the next week. <laughs> really? No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> so, Christmas. <laughs> think it. So, I think so, oh, white flag. I'm done. <laughs> Vince likes uh, that. So yeah. I have a couple of things here, and I see our controller <laughs> over here, and you know I remember having these discussion with our controller during budget hearings, and our former controller, including the mayor. Uh, saying that we are way overspending. Um, and regardless of the money that's coming in, which we have none thus far, um, these are verbatim the controller's words. We are overspending, guys. Am I right, controller? <laughs> Those are your words. I'm not, I'm not making it up. She's Everybody heard it. I mean, regardless. Yeah. We're, we're not here to, I mean, we're not in a courtroom. I'm not holding you accountable. I know. Those words were said, we are sure, overspending. Like I, I, there's no I, time frame on that comment, uh, Counselor. I don't... Uh, Roger, Lynn, we can find uh, that quick, right? I, I yeah. don't know the date or time, no doubt. what you okay. reference. Then I'll, then I'll just make your point, though. Guys, the, the more the story is, I, I am in support of positions and bettering and moving our city. But I'm also here, I have a fiduciary duty, as the mayor does. Maybe not Roger, but every single else that's sitting up here, including our clerk, our treasurer, whomever it is that works for the city, we have a fiduciary duty to the city. I, I want to support these positions openly. Uh, I think these are something that if the mayor feels he needs, needs this to move the city forward, by all means. But you also have to know that, yeah, as a part-time employee for the city, as a councilman, we, we have a fiduciary duty to ensure that the way the funding is being spent is adequate. If I'm hearing from the professional, our comptroller and our former comptroller and our mayor, that we don't have enough money to spend the way we're spending or we are overspending money, then we create three new positions it puts me in a position to like, I'm, I'm being strung like a rubber band here. We're spending too much money, but we're spending more money. <coughs> Where are we getting this money from? But we have no money. And I'm not saying that we're broke. I'm just saying that these are the things that have been constantly said to everybody in this chamber. That's Council, my first statement. Okay. Council Chair, can I make, well, can I answer finish, your question finish, real quick? Finish, 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 I mean, I want to answer what you just, the yeah, question just Let me just finish here. We keep talking about, you know, Mr. Deeb, and I don't, and I, I tell you how much I appreciate everything you say, but you, you said verbatim, we keep talking about how uh, things keep failing in the city and we're having to continue to repair them and we're so stuck in the ages, but for the last three years that I've been on council, you've been with me here. Mm -hmm. So what have we done for preventative measures in these three years? Not talking about the past, but in these three years, have we done, you can answer this when I'm done with my list, but what have we done in these three years okay. 
In a very short period of time, what have we done to take those steps aside from these three positions moving forward? Okay. So, and, and, and I only asked, and I know you're busy and you're a one man show, mm -hmm. but we have to, if we can't keep venting and, and so, dwelling on, on things in the past, so if we reason, have not taken the initiative in the step, but I'm going to finish my things and I'll have you answer that as soon as I'm done with this one as well. Uh, building and maintenance. Mm -hmm. I think Zuhair uh, touched on this one a little bit. Um, you know, with, 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 the, with the asset manager, I want to make it very clear. We have a building and maintenance de department. I don't know, again, we're part-time. I have a full-time job elsewhere. But I do know, according to the charter and according to employees in the city, we have a building and maintenance, two of them. And so these individuals that work for our city are either not doing their job or have a different role that we were, everybody here on council, misunderstood. And it's, that's nobody's fault, but this is, again, this is a good conversation, this is good communication. This isn't an attack on the administration or on Ali Deeb or what these new positions are. It's just open communication with everybody here today. Mm -hmm. I also have here uh, water meters. You know, this is, this is my cup of tea. We're at Riverside. I mean, I, I can't give you the exact date, but I'm sure if I ask the clerk and I, we go through it, we can find out when we were talking about this. This is something that you brought forward that we're going to be spending our CSO bond uh, I could tell you it was in 2021, maybe 2022 when we discussed this. And it was regarding water meters that we're going to get after we do projects one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Today we're celebrating success on something that we haven't even received. We're, we, that we're celebrating on something that we could potentially be spending our own money, which might put us even in a higher deficit of a situation where if we have to spend our money in order to get it, we're not hurting ourselves. Because we might not have enough money to be able to cover 40%, 30%, because we talked, it's 22,000 Homes or, or 24,000 homes or, or meters that we need at the expense, you know, that could be up to 12, 13 million dollars. We don't know if we have that to put up front at first. Again, we don't have an actuary report. So at this point, I can't take he say, she said. All right. I'm going to give you the same answer I gave you when three years ago when you told me, when you asked about the bond money that had. We should have never got be, it and we should have told the state uh, to come no, up with it. No, no, no. I'm going to give you the same answer. The, the bond money that you sold in 21 for those projects were not enough for the projects. So we did, we did the projects in order because we had committed for the CSOs, one, two, and three, and we did not have enough money to start the water meters. We knew that from, from ever since I came on board. No, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one, Mr. Deeb. I'm so sorry. I love you dearly, but that is 100% inaccurate and false. Absolutely. 100% inaccurate and false. 200%, sir, because I knew so then, from you know the what? start. Maybe we need to start documenting more can, can often. You let him right finish, can you let I'm him finish the answer, sir? I'm telling you, there was never sir. enough money in the, in the bond, sir. I, Roger, I was still speaking regarding my opinion. No, he, you asked him a question. He was. I, I did it. I said that I was going to go through all of them in the beginning. Look, we're all public servants. Yes, okay? great. We respect each other. Please let him finish, sir. <laughs> Roger, I was also speaking. I asked the mayor and I, Ali Deeb to let me finish. I'm not. Okay, go ahead. Finish Thank up. you. Thank you. Um, He's doing it Rachel LaPointe style. I'm, I'm just going to go through because this is what 40 the council, questions. This is what the council go chair prefers. Let me know when you're done. And. Mr. Deeb, I promise you, this, this isn't a back and forth. Really, I, I don't need your opinion on, at the end of the day. If you don't feel like you want to give it to me in, in a more respected manner. I'm giving but, but really, it seems like here, no matter what the council says here, I'm going to, so maybe I'm going to direct one more question to the mayor. Mayor, would one of these directors or one of your directors disrespects a council member, who holds them responsible? Is it HR? Is it you? Who is it? Or do we just openly let them go, continue to disrespect this council? I'm going to tell you where I stand on this. Until this council feels like they're respected by your administration and by your directors, you're not going to get the same respect out of me as well. That's where I emotionally stand. And Roger, I don't need an opinion on you from that. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you exactly opinion, what's happening. Sir, I've been talking to you okay. as I talk to you, I, the I, city I council representative. I Please. ask respect, and I expect I, th the same from you. Okay. I give you respect So my, so my question time. there is, so when one of these new directors or each. a current director disrespects a council member, how are we going to go about taking care of that? Will HR assist us? Will you assist us? Where are we going to draw the line that council demands respect? Because that's going to be one of my questions okay. here. And you may not feel that it is, but I truly feel but for the next four fair, years I'm here. I don't believe Ali Deeb. I'm not talking about Ali Deeb. Right I'm speaking as a whole. Okay. Because it isn't the first time where a director has disrespected a council member. And I've had this discussion with other individuals here. We're not, going to get, we're not going to get into the trenches, but it's happening. So I would also like an answer on that. Okay. Those are my questions, guys. So, Deeb, answer the questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Which question? Can you, can you repeat the questions? Uh, well, that, that's why for those that come in the audience and, uh, on a regular basis, this was Rachel LaPointe style. She'll ask 40 questions in two minutes, and you don't know where to start. Comptroller, 
just agreed we don't we don't know if we overspend what well, we're in a bad position council chair um, let me answer that one okay okay we we already answered that question Question, Councilman. Okay, so we talked about. I'm sorry, Mary. Street. Nobody answered that question. No, 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 no. We talked about it already. So let me reiterate. Okay, so when you allocate certain amount of money to go to certain projects, okay, just for example, we knew we knew we we're going to take money out for the for the water meters because we knew the money that was taken out. I can't remember the exact date. The twenty something million dollars. Okay, even though that money. I mean, that's another story, the way it was actually uh, cashed out like at first instead of waiting in phases. That's costing us probably over a million dollars because we cash it all of it at the same time without waiting for projects to come in. So the money that we're saving right now, for example, we talked about the lead lines. The lead lines, ever since I can remember, Council Chair, Councilman Constant, and also Councilman Muscat retired, remembers back in the day, we, w we paid, the city, the residents paid for that, the lead lines, correct, council members? Okay, we paid for it. No other city does that, you know, maybe very few. I've been, I've been in meetings with, for the last three years with every community in Western Wayne and DCC. Everybody goes to federal funding or state funding for lead lines. I can't remember how much we paid. I know it was in the millions. Okay, as the, Mr. Deep mentioned, we have what, close to $2 million we allocate mm -hmm. to replace lead lines. Right now, the, the government has given us the money to replace the lead lines, so that's a saving. So the money that we can get from the lead lines, we can actually use that. Also, the other thing, there's, there's grants that were available for streets. So we never actually, we were the first city, even the city of Inkster, our next door neighbor, were getting funding for streets. The city of Dearborn Heights never applied for it. Other cities has been getting funding for streets. So that money we're gonna save on those streets, we can use that money as well. So there's a lot of money that we can take, even the interest money that we're gonna save and not taking out bonds to do what we need to do, that's, that's gonna be in the millions, uh, Councilman. So, so okay. when we talked about- So we're like, gonna shave off fat from other places to bring in to be able to cover this spot. I'm all for that, okay. that's great. We need that on the actuary report. I, I appreciate that. I really do. Okay. The other question is, let's talk about the disrespect part, because that is something that's definitely going to play on my role. I, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's happening. I, I can tell you this council members here, have, many of us have been disrespected by council. And I'm not saying Ali Deeb. I want to make that very clear. Ali Deeb is a great man. One of, I, probably one of my favorite directors in the city. This is, he was just caught on the crossfires. Um, <laughs> all the time, I'm, you know, <laughs> must, be the, must be the blue shirt, you know, <laughs> must be the blue collateral, shirt. collateral damage. But, but I want you to know, I want to put a white shirt on. it's happening, Mayor. It means <laughs> you have had these conversations. That is Co true. The, the HR is here, you are here, Roger has been informed. And my question is, when these three new roles come in and they feel they're untouchable because that's how our current directors feel, mm -hmm. look, we're, we're, Roger, I know you can roll your eyes. But it's happening. Councilman. That was now rolling my eyes. When I want to roll my eyes, I'll roll it right in front of you. Yeah, you just, I'm answering <laughs> you. I'm ready to answer your question. Please answer it, Roger. Because you came to me with a disrespect. I took the steps and talked to the chief about the specific incident that you brought forward, mm -hmm. and they're so working on investigating it. Don't, don't conclude, because it's, just, it's your side. But guess what? There's other sides. And everything has to be looked at completely, not just what you want. I know. Okay? I've been in okay. public service since 1981. I worked with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. I've worked with the Sadat Peace Foundation, 1989, brother. So we work, so Rogers, and, we, and, we, and we work in public service. I'm not service talking about the incident that happened twice. And that was not public service. We are accountable okay. to people, yeah. all of us. Roger, I'm talking apples, you're talking oranges. No, I'm not. I'm talking, I'm, exactly I'm asking the mayor talking. a question. I'm asking, okay, I'm we're asking. Off, we're way off track. I know, but, but I'm not. Point of order. I, my question is, when one of these directors Moving forward, disrespects this councilman. Who do they report to? Okay, but until we've hired and officially approved this, let's not go into what if, if something happens. Let's let's leave this one. What's happening, council? I understand. We'll bring it up at the regular council meeting. Okay. Do you have all your questions answered by? <laughs> Honestly, no, I don't, but I don't really care at this point. I was glad I was able to vent a little bit. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> if you if you're better now. Yeah, if you're better. All right, uh, councilman Ahmad. Thank you, councilor chair. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Mr. Deep. Uh, my first question is, uh, the proposed city organization chart, was that done by you or somebody else? 
Mariana, we, I we worked. We, we Chief worked of staff together. Mariana. Okay, so my question is, first of all, looking at it, is the DPW still in business? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's not even it's not even mentioned here. <laughs> it's not mentioned. To be honest with you, I mean, I'm, it's not just uh, for the past couple of months. I've been hearing about this reorganization <laughs> chart about the city department, and all we got is a one chart, and the DPW is even missing from the chart. Um, mm -hmm. huh. I mean, to, I don't know, probably it's just a typo, but I mean, to be honest with you, I expected way more. I mean, for a city organization chart, to see more, to understand more, I'm all, about, I'm all about data. I come from an engineering background, too, just like our mayor. So, I mean, what I'm seeing here, my first question is, okay, I do believe, uh, per charter, the city engineer yourself yeah. is part That's of right. building and safety, and building and engineering department. So well, what's the purpose of moving it and having a separate department by itself? Well, planning and engineering is, is always its own. It's not, building department does what building departments do. The, the inspections, the building permits, the construction, the, um, um, you know, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and all that oversight and the processing of the permits and stuff. Mm -hmm. But so in the past, what you had is a contract employee, weight trim, mm -hmm. uh, acting as a city engineer. So you, you relied on them. And you also had a contract for planning with the mm -hmm. Are referred to zoning and planning reviews. So what we're, what we're doing is what other cities have is planning engineering. Now it, it, it's it's not a department; it's a unit that's separate because it provides services to other department, not just to the building. Building is just so I, I consult business uh, business with building. So mm -hmm. the inspector when they have an issue with engineering, they, I go on and look at it. The same with parks. So parks have issues. Every other department is the same way. DPW. I spend a lot of time with DPW. Now I didn't prepare this, but you're right; it's missing. No changes are no, <laughs> that's no a major changes department. are taking place. DPW is not being so. This what you what you what we identified are the three positions needed to augment what we currently have. It's not replacing building maintenance at all. Mm -hmm. Facility manager is a totally different t different animal, totally, and and they're not doing building maintenance. They're oversight. They're providing oversight. And facility, and you know, asset management. An asset is everything. It's not just building. You know, pavement is an asset. Bridges are an asset. Mm -hmm. Everything the city owns is an asset. Parks are assets. So uh, this is the asset manager has nothing to do with a building. Uh, uh, you know, maintenance department. The same with DPW. DPW is not be is not being replaced. They will continue to do now. They can use. More assistance, and I provide a lot of my times. If you look at my time charges, I spend a lot of time with DPW because I'm trying to, and the same with parks. I think it was just missed. And, and Councilman, it was just missed. Uh, uh, no, okay. I, mean, I mean, it's no big deal. But I mean, Councilman, real quick, can I? Okay, so this software for this here is really, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good software for charts. So when we create, when we actually had this draft, we were just doing like copy. Mm -hmm. And we copied a cell, and it was, again, my bad. It uh, was no omitted problem, no. by mistake. I mean, I was all about the it IT will be department, added. having IT director. I'm all about moving the city forward. It will be added. And, you know, hiring whatever we need. But moving on, since you mentioned the asset manager, I mean, all about having, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm an asset manager to myself, so I'm all about having an asset manager. But, you know what, it wasn't provided any data. Like, I know the mayor said we have maybe uh, 30 residential, 100 lots. I don't even know what the city owned. You, I wasn't provided any data, like whatever we owned, if we do need a city uh, asset manager or not. So it's not about the, just the property. That's just one portion of it. We're still missing. I'm trying to, the, the asset is, is uh, asset in my opinion, at least maybe I'm looking at it differently. In, in my uh, professional experience, asset is everything the city owns. Bridges are an asset, and I keep going back to bridges because they have been neglected as long as the city has been in existence. No, no, I'm with you, but so how, how come we don't have a list of whatever the city owns? And we're supposed exactly. to maintain. Exactly. Exactly. I, you with them. own 14 bridges, 12 of them on the south. I mean, all, everything. everything. How come we don't have a list? Like, if we have well, a list, like how many, well, how many properties we own, how many plots we own, how many commercial buildings we own, <laughs> how many bridges we're supposed to maintain? I mean, I need data in order for me to see, oh, probably, yeah, we do need an asset manager to take care of all this stuff. And, and in my own opinion, I think the asset manager needs to be with the DPW department, not a department by itself. Because I think it has to be linked somehow. He needs to maintain, I mean, he needs to hire, call somebody to maintain something. I mean, he needs to call DPW for that, doesn't he? Or, he or she? So, so does engineering. 
So engineering does the same. So way. I, so I, think I mean, we, we're supposed to be a team. These these positions are going to integrate with all the departments. Building is the same way. So I guess we have to work with this building. chart then. Make make sure. I mean, somehow. Right, this is not a perfect chart. It yeah. is. It is not. But I, I have to say, this is uh, th this is a lot more than what we had before. We had no chart. Right? Uh -huh. We're we're trying we're trying to improve on existing. This is not. I mean, it's a chart. Not perfect. <laughs> Right. Draft. Uh, about the community relation position, I mean, I'm all about community relations, but uh, I, th I do think, too, that it has to be an impartial position that, you know, probably uh, linked somehow maybe to the council members, too, as well. Uh, I know the mayor said that we have the money, but yet I haven't seen, and I do agree with Councilman Baidun, that the control did say that we're overspending. Even the control before said we're overspending. And yet, I haven't seen any financial budget evaluation. In order for me to say, yeah, I'm okay with those positions to be approved and we can spend the money. Uh, all I'm saying, just give me more data. Give me a better chart. Give me more, give me more explanation. Tell me exactly what the city owns. Tell me the city if we're able to financially to, you know, create those positions or not. And I do agree with Councilman Abdelha, too. I think, I mean, if we need to change something, I think it does need an ordinance. I, we, we do have to adopt a new ordinance or something. Uh, because it, I did look at the uh, 512, and I think we do have to do something regarding that. So I, I guess we have to look deeply into this before we jump into it, uh, especially like I need more data. I need to know exactly what the city owns, what we're responsible for, and I need to know what the money is coming from. Okay. Thank okay. you, Councilor Chair. Next, next up is Councilman Wenzel. Go ahead. Thank you, Councilor Thank you, Council Chair. That's a couple statements, but one question. First of all, you know, I'm really concerned about the disrespect we're getting also, and I'm a major recipient of a lot of disrespect from uh, directors and different people in the, in the city. Um, the, the director of asset managers, management, um, our treasurer was asking for assets for a long time, buildings and property that we own, and I, I don't think we ever got a Wait, list. Wait, a microphone. Time, no, 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 microphone. It, it's on. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. And uh, our, our treasurer was asking for a list of assets, buildings, and property, and I don't think we ever got that. Council members in the past have asked for a list of uh, city vehicles and, uh, you know, what, what we're responsible for. We, I don't think we've ever got, gotten that either. Um, as far as, you know, asset management, I mean, maintain and re uh, repair, uh, look at and inspect buildings. I mean, we have several service contracts that we pay for for different things in the city. I mean, that that some of those things should be eliminated. I mean, we're paying service contracts for people to just wait for something to break. I think they should be taking care of these inspections. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, we, we, I we pay a lot for those service contracts. And um, uh, now the city engineer, are, are you going to be the city engineer? Ideally. Okay, okay, ideally, that's good. Yeah, I agree, ideally. Um, and you're going to be a one-man show, or do you, are you going to need to be hiring some uh, some staff? So um, I'm doing exactly what I'm doing now. No, no, no staff. Not it's not intended to be a department. It's intended to be a position. So for for projects to be handled the same way they're handled now. So they I over I provide oversight and I provide the link between the agencies and the designers and contractors. Same as same as it is today. Mm -hmm. that, that was my question. I had a couple more comments. You know, for the uh, director of asset management, maybe we can uh, we can uh, delegate our our current uh, DPW, our building maintenance uh, building facility managers, and give them more responsibility for inspecting these things. Um, now, Mr. Mayor, this uh, city engineer, do you expect any other hires to to, to um, help him along in his job, or is, is it definitely going to be just one person in the city engineer? As, as, uh, as Mr. Deep just mentioned, he's been doing it for almost three years by himself. So, so it's just going to be definitely one person. Just one person. That's <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's going to be full time. I yep. just have one last comment. Wait, and, 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 um, no, so there's not going to be a second. No, these three positions, there's going to be uh, pensions involved in that. And we had a representative from the pension board here at our last meeting speaking on another issue where some additional pensions were, would be added. And he said that they cannot provide, the state law says that you, you can't affect the pension amounts coming in or paying out unless an actuary report is done for the pension board. And I was wondering uh, where we stand on that. I mean, we, we definitely, I mean, I, I tried bringing some stuff before the council in, in the past couple things, and I would say, hey, where's your actuary report? 
And when we bring something up, we always ask for an actuary. We're asked for an actuary, but when someone else brings something up, it's, we have to ask them to get it for us. And uh, my last statement is, now, uh, we're going to have $45, $50 million, you know, that we have to spend over the next three years or two years or whatever it is. Um, now, after that, we're not going to have this money, and we're creating these new positions. I mean, if a year ago, I was tr talking to the administration about giving some, some raises to, you know, 1% raise to some of our union members, and it was said, you know, we don't have, we don't have any extra money. And now we've got a lot of extra money, and I hope it's not. We have ARPA money. You can't count on that for anything. you got to keep that completely out of the budget. It, there should be an asterisk in our budget, our, our general fund that says, you know. The ARPA extra, money already spent. Yeah, I mean, this is not, this, you know, $11 million for, and we just put $11 million in from, uh, what was it, the, uh, the, the pension or the, no, 345, Act 345. We put that into the, our general fund, and there should be asterisks around that. It's just that, you know, we have to have an actual report on all these things, what, what's gonna not, how it's going to affect us two, three, four, five years down the line if we can afford this. I'm all for these positions. I mean, I mean every one of these positions, I think, you know, most of them are a good idea. But, you know, let's be, uh, let's be responsible here and get the right data, like uh, Councilman Ahmad said, Councilman Baydoun. Let's, let's get all our information before we act on these. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sure. Councilman. Next up is Councilman Abdul Haq and then uh, Councilman Badoon, and then we're going to go to the audience. Okay. The asset manager, is he going to be responsible for the money too in the Treasury Department because that is asset of the city? There will be facilities and, and anything that has to do with physical, physical property, physical. Okay, I recommend that will be very clear in the description so nobody will misunderstand that that person will be responsible for managing the money or looking after the money or interfering with the treasurer department. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want uh, to say something. Uh, Wade Trim, we supposed to hire engineer to help to save money. In 2022, they, spent, they charged us close to $600,000. This year, we are in the middle of the year, they charged us $800,000. So we are basically spending $200,000 more, and we don't know how much more by the end of the year. I would expect over a million and some. So where is the saving, Mr. Mayor, if we're going to bring city engineer in all these positions to us, if we still hire a company and we are paying them more this year, more than double than last year. Council Chair. Go ahead. Right now, we have mandate by the state, Eagle, that we have to do CSO projects. So CSO projects, these are huge projects, you know, for the entire city that we have to separate the water and sewer. So that's what Way Trim is working on right now is the water sewer, the CSO program or CSO fund mandated by Eagle. So we still have a lot of, I mean, just to give you an example, we had we had a plaza that was approved by the previous administration that to put, you know, I mean, I'll talk about it. You guys can FOIA it on Ford Road. You know, they changed the zoning, and this poor guy he wanted to actually. He was, he was starting to build. Mr. Deeb is the one that stopped him, even though it was approved by the previous administration. There was nowhere to, to put the sewer. So Mr. Deep caught it, and they put a halt on the program, the whole freaking project. Like, hey, wait a minute. Where's the sewer supposed to go? If you put the sewer, it w you were going to flood probably like three or four streets, both uh, north and south of Ford Road because there was no place for the sewer to go. So that's the program, he worked on that. So he had to reroute the sewer to the back side of the property. So this is something that, you know, the previous, you know, that probably would have cost us millions of dollars by that contractor, but Mr. Deeb was able to do that. And luckily, luckily that uh, the builder or the investor was willing to cooperate and spend what, a couple hundred thousand dollars in addition to the project so that he can make the city happy. It's like, you know, I don't want to fight with the city. So, and again, 
There's a lot of other programs that just that, that we're paying for weight trim that Mr. Deeb is working on. Any company that comes in or any business or home that comes in, he's actually looking at that stuff. He's looking at the water sewer, even Dua. Dua for the last, I don't know how many years, you know, we were part of Dua. Just the three years, three years, the last three years, we can't recover more than three years. The city overspent $320,000. The taxpayers are paying through their water bill. How much? 360. 300, no, sorry, I apologize. $360,000 we were able to recover from Dua because we were just giving people money away without doing anything till Mr. Deep came in. It's like, wait a minute, we're overspending here. We're, we're paying, and nobody's going to look and say, you're paying me extra. They're going to take the check. They're going to cash a check from the city. So that's what they were doing for the last, I don't know how many years, probably like 15, 16 years. So imagine that, that, and just the three years, $360,000 that we paid. That's why we have a city engineer. That's why we had the previous entity is concentrating on CSO projects only. So, My so let, uh, just uh, can I add you know, follow that? up on you. How much the city paid to this project on Ford Road to connect to the sewer? I don't have the data. I wish you would have called me $200,000 the taxpayers gave the developer to connect. He spent 200 and we taxpayers gave 200000 so that money we should have never paid because somebody bought a watermelon. It is bad or good. It's his property. It's not ours. We should have never paid $200,000 out. Council Chair. Okay, Councilman Bidun. Um, I'll, I'll keep it brief because I know I was a little emotional during my statements. I also uh, want this community to know that openly and, and waveringly, I support a community liaison. Uh, I think that this city, and I'm not speaking for an, a specific individual, but I think when you walk into City Hall, I think tensions are high. I think we're lacking uh, uh, customer service. And I don't mean because certain individuals like or don't dislike somebody. I just think that everybody's so busy and that, you know, when, you know, when John Doe walks through the door, we're not having that community liaison. Uh, so I think this position is detrimental to the city. I think it's needed. I don't mean detrimental in a bad way. So, Roger, I know you're looking at me with your eyebrows up. Um, I mean, I mean, like, it's, it's, we're, we're, it's detrimental because we don't have a liaison. Um, and I want you to know that most municipalities, in, I think, in the last 10 years have adopted this. Some municipalities have five, six, seven, and different department liaisons. Uh, you know, you can, and, you know, different divisions of liaison. Like, there's a, there in, the, in, in Dearborn, there's a South End liaison person. There's an East End liaison person. There's a West End liaison person. Dearborn Heights doesn't have any of that. Dearborn Heights has seven council members. And in the, in the city, we're blessed to take on that role. But I think a community liaison is definitely something. However, however, Roger, there still needs to be an actuary report. There still needs to be data here. There still you need to give. You can't just say, here's a job description. We're going to go out and put it out in the public, and I need you all to approve this. It needs to be done the right way, guys. Okay. We, we, we want to support this. But we're saying we don't. I want to make that clear. David? That it just needs to be done through the right steps. That is all. Okay. I'm allowed, Councilman, one last comment, and then we're going to go to audience questions. On all of these positions, we have a status of full-time exempt, and in parentheses, salary. What does the exempt mean? They're not, they don't get overtime. They're yeah. Union. All they're right. Salary. Professional. Benefit. And then the status, they are eligible for benefits, PTO and pensionable. What's PTO? Eight time off. Eight time off, not overtime. And pensionable, they're entitled to a pension almost right off the bat? After five years. After five years. There is a time? Okay, that was my other concern. Okay. At this point, we're going to go ahead and go to members in the audience. <laughs> ladies first. You know I'm going to go always ladies first, Ray. <laughs> You're giving two minutes? Thank you, Ray. Well, you look like a lady to me. Well, thank you, Ray. Um, good evening, everyone. Sue Kaminsky, and Boys Street. All right, hold on one second. Just to keep you on, on your tippy toes, this is two minutes. So okay. usually we give three because it's a study session. We're going to give two. Okay. Um, infrastructure improvements cost a lot of money. As a previous school board member, I can tell you $38 million can go very quick. It doesn't sound like this council or administration is going to have a problem spending 45 million because we know we need 
probably three times of that 45 million of improvements. So that's just a comment. And it's things you won't see. It's no new rose bushes for in front of City Hall. That is strictly infrastructure. The other thing I wanted to say is I agree with council, some of you members, you need to have an actuary. You can't spend money unless you know what you have. End. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Former councilman, round of applause for that man. To me. Yeah, don't raise your eyebrows. See, even, even the former councilman sick of it. No, he never did that to me. Uh, because they, Ray Muscat. Because you were favored here. <laughs> Ray Muscat, Dearborn Heights, Wayne County. Thank you, council chair, mayor, city clerk. How are you? Um, you know, we, we, we need to have a, le uh, a history lesson, especially when we got to these water meters. We spent... We bonded $9 million for water meters. You did? I personally wanted that water meters to be separated from the CSO fund of $20 million. The whole thing came out to $24.5 million, I believe it was. Council did not go with the way I wanted it. They lumped it all together. I did. I didn't, I'm not mentioning who, and who did or who didn't, but I can tell you they didn't vote for it that way. And I know from previous years... Okay, once you put money into a fund and call it something, they use it for whatever they want, okay? And it all went away. Plus, we were told by the engineering company, Sorry. engineering company, that that was going to be enough money, never taking in consideration the infrastructure of how they were going to read the meters. That was going to cost money. Ali Deeb was a godsend to me. <laughs> we spoke the same language, okay? Engineering, all right? We were taken for a ride for many, many, many years on poor engineering, okay? I'm just telling you, we're going to save so much money, it's not even funny on how things are going to go. I could go on and on and give you guys history lessons on what was going on here. Look at, look at Wilson. How long did Wilson last, okay? Charlesworth, another thing, just poured and it was all spalding. And my little bicycle rider there was the one that found it. And when we say building maintenance, it's not what you call really building maintenance, like you're going to go out and repair a boiler or you're going to repair this. They're going to do odd jobs, but we need a facilities person that's going to take care of this stuff. And that's where a facilities manager comes in. I worked in facilities, so I know that. Thank you. Former Councilman, thank you. Margaret King, Mayfair Street, Deborah Nights. Um... I've been coming to these meetings for a year now. We know that. Um, and I've just been listening to everything that has been going on in the city that I reside in. Um, Eaton Center, I hold dear and close to my heart because my grandpa attends there and my adopted mom um, has been attending there for years. Um, I sat here on July 25th, 2023. Comptroller King, Cindy King was up here and she said that it was taken out of budget. How are we going to have, because the month, the, our budget was too tight. It was too tight. Now we're coming back with these three directors, and we still don't have a director for the Eaton Center. That puts a bad taste in my mouth, because our Eaton, our Eaton Center and our senior citizens should be top priority. They have been residing in the city for God knows how long, and they still need the director. It puts a bad taste in my mouth. I get it that we need these three, but that's something that needs to be addressed because the budget was too tight. Thank you. Yeah, I knew. There she goes. Might even give her an extra 20 seconds if she needs it. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Venegas, Dwight Street. My biggest problem I have with all this is I look at all the job opportunities that we have online right now. If we want to put all these new positions out there, what if we fulfill all of the positions that we have vacant right now? How are we going to pay for this? And a lot of the positions that we have online, like paying $17 for someone to be a cadet at the jail, is an insult. I just think that the money could be utilized more, and I think we could fulfill the positions that we have out there if we offered more money in our job opportunities. And I think that's more important to provide the basic services the city needs and for us to feel safe. We need our police. And our police doesn't even have what our salary is, what we pay a police officer. So who would even want to apply at this point? 
That's all I have to say. I just think it'd be better spent somewhere else. Thank you. Thanks. Oh no, here goes Vince. Oh, here goes the <laughs> I might give you an extra five seconds. The neighborhood went bad when I walked in, man. <laughs> Yeah, Roger doesn't wink at you because you're ugly. <laughs> <clears throat> Love you, Ray. Vince Trapkowski, Columbia Street. I would hope that the mayor would consider sitting down with his staff that he has now and interviewing the staff that we have at DPW who are fairly well educated, some of them, and consider them for these positions before he goes outside of the city. Promotion from within. It's not how the Marines do it. <laughs> now, you get better uh, uh, at work atmosphere and, and greater attitude from the people that you already have on staff when you see them promoting from within. So let's take a look at some of our staff, find out what their educations are, and take a look at them first. And as far as our assets and stuff like that goes, you know, part of our assets is the uh, Treasury Department, property, all the uh, properties that we're gaining along the Ecorse Creek, and our number one asset is Warren Valley. So let's make sure that we're all managing that properly because we don't want to lose it. Have a good holiday. Thank you, Holiday. Anybody else in the audience? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and go on Zoom. I see uh, our treasurer, Lisa Hicks Clayton. Please go ahead. Two minutes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, bear with me. I had surgery this morning, so I don't sound real good. Sorry to hear that. Um, I wish you speak can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. I'm, I don't sound myself, so I do apologize. Um, but I wanted to call in after listening. Uh, first of all, I want to remind council, you do not need a FOIA financial records from the city of Dearborn right. Heights. Right. You have access. Okay. Right. Second of all, um, you mentioned cash flow, and of course, I'm doing recalculations. So you'll be getting that, that forecast again, projected. Okay, let's remember that word. Projected expenses and cash revenue through the end of the fiscal year. June 30th. You'll get that shortly. Um, the other thing I want to tell you regarding the three positions, and it's already been said, you do need to know the impact on payroll and benefits. And by state law, which is Public Act 314, you do need an actuarial report yes. because it will have long-term effects on your legacy costs, your pension system. And has the pension system even been contacted about this? Because last time, the last meeting, they had not been. Now, regarding water, uh, Councilman Muscat, or our uh, retired Councilman Muscat, honorable, he is correct. The bond, the 21 bond of 25 million, is now down to 7 million. So paying for the meters is not a possibility. But I believe Mr. Deeb is working on some grants for that and has mentioned that to you. I also want to remind you when you talk about water that you currently have $12 million invested. It was from water and another $10 million in the two bank accounts. So therefore, you have $22 million sitting. We call that idle money. And then I want to talk about payroll beef briefly. So payroll, when I started as a treasurer in 21, we our average payroll was for at least two years around a half a million to six hundred thousand. Leave it thirty more seconds. All right. Yeah. Well, you might want to know this, so I will wrap it up. So you've gone from a half a million to eight and a half. 850,000, oh no, I'm sorry, misquoted, 500,000, a half a million, to 850,000. That is what payroll has been. The last payroll was 1 million, the one before that was 1.7, and that's with payouts and clothing allowance, et cetera. So again, I just want you to be aware 
of where you're at right now and where are you going? Because Thank council you, fiduciary responsibility. Thank you. Uh, Madam Treasurer, I have a question for you. Are you still there? She is. She's just muted. Madam Treasurer, apparently. Okay, we'll come back to her. That's all right. The meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody yeah. else on Zoom, Madam Clerk? I, I see a Sam. Sam, can you please go ahead and unmute? Hold on. City street name, please. Hello. Yes. City yeah, street name, go ahead. Name. Are you there? Are you cutting off? Can you hear me? No. Now we can. Okay, Sam Hodge, Dearborn Heights, Michigan, Wayne County. Go ahead. Just a comment for Councilman uh, Baidon. Go ahead. You're cutting off badly. I I can't hear anything. Are you there, Sam? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds, maybe to go to a different phone, because nothing's coming through. Are you there? Last time. Okay. You wanna? Is there anybody else on Zoom? I don't see nobody else. Do you? Okay. Anybody else in the audience that would like to speak? All right, let's just go to Sam one last time. Give him an opportunity. Can you unmute him, please? Sam, can you hear us? <clears throat> one once, twice. Okay. We're going to take a five-minute break, and then we'll start just before 7 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> 